Let's suppose you're a city, oh, say, Baltimore, Maryland, and for years you've been labeled as blue collar and dirty and dull. And let's say that you've spent millions of dollars rebuilding and revitalizing your city. How would you get the word out? Chamber of Commerce, maybe? Newspaper and magazine advertising? Or how about sending your message by ship? An 1820-style Baltimore Clipper schooner, to be exact. Okay, Mr. Mate, set the foresail. Go! Go, pick it up. Be quick. Set the staysail. Oh, is she the main, Mr. Mate? Looking good. Keep going. All the way. She's called the Pride of Baltimore, a 90-foot hand-built wooden schooner whose 20th century mission is to sail the world and spread the story of Baltimore's renaissance. Yes, it's a different mission she has today than she would have had 150 years ago, but she's also got the crew to do it. First, there's her captain, Armin Elsesser, with more than 10 years of schooner experience behind him, much of it's been aboard charter ships in the Caribbean. And it's a good thing he knows his business, too, because his first mate, Rusty Geis, got all his sailing experience as a truck driver. I was out west, and I, my mother sent me a, an article about uh, the uh, city of Baltimore's building a, you know, a topsail schooner, a Baltimore Clipper. I said, well, what the heck do we need one of those for? Then when I came home, I saw him building it. I said, hmm, that's pretty neat. I went and talked to some of the guys and got really interested. And I found out after the maiden voyage, they came back and they needed crew. And I walked down and said, you know, I don't know anything about it, but I'd like to try it. So the captain said, well, you look strong and dumb enough. I think I'll take you. you know? And has Rusty got his first mate duties down pat now? You're like second in command. So, you know, if we mutiny, then I'd be the leader. You see? <laughs> you didn't hear that. <laughs> the Pride, as it's sometimes called, carries some other interesting crew members, too. There's biology major Dick Snyder. Well, about three or four months ago, I knew I was finishing up school and I wanted to get back into sailing. So I started writing letters, and uh, this was one of the responses I got. And then there are two deckhands the Pride definitely would not have carried 150 years ago. Former Alaskan forestry worker Lori McCosh and Debbie Rowan, a music major? They're very different. You can't equate the two. There's no tie-in, is there? Music and uh, sailing? Well, actually, there is because, um, you know, sea shanties were a part, an important part of, of the daily working, the daily job on board ship. And, uh, you know, we, once in a while, Rusty breaks into a sea shanty when we're hauling on the main, main hires or something. the lifestyle. I like being outdoors a lot. Life aboard the Pride is very similar to the way it was around 1800, when the Clipper schooner helped put Baltimore on the map. At that time, they were the fastest ships the world had ever seen. These schooners were used primarily as revenue cutters, merchant ships, and privateers, and during the War of 1812, their great speed enabled them to run British blockades. However, their sleek hulls and huge sails prevented them from carrying large cargoes, so by 1850, they were replaced. Today, life for the pride of Baltimore crew consists of work and work and still more work. A normal workday routine starts at uh, 7 o'clock, and we have breakfast at 7.30, and we start the day at 8 o'clock. Work on various maintenance projects, various deck projects, which might include painting, working on the rigging, mending sails. We always have a watch. There's someone on board 24 hours a day. And um, when we're in port, we generally have one person on watch, maybe two if the conditions warrant. And uh, they stay in the watch during the night. And then the next day, we, we proceed on with, uh, with our work routine. Besides the free meals, which the crew takes turns preparing, a deckhand trainee earns only $200 a month 
and finally gets to $400 a month with full deckhand status, of course. And then there's <clears throat> the free lodging. If you think the accommodations on a Baltimore Clipper are classy, well, you're right. You've already seen where the crew eats. And let me assure you that the sleeping quarters are first class, too. So why do all the work in exchange for little money, no privacy, and no leisure? Well, the money doesn't really matter. It's uh, as far as a paying job. I, it's just a pleasure to be on board. The lifestyle is not what a lot of women can handle. Ten of us live in one room, you know, basically. I think that uh, I think after someone sails for a certain length of time, perhaps a year or so, then it's imperative that you just come ashore for a few weeks. Um, but I find myself thinking that it's about time to go sailing again shortly thereafter. British poet John Macefield once wrote, I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick, and the wind song, and the white sail shaking, and the gray mist on the sea's face, and the gray dawn breaking. Henry will be back with a look at tomorrow night's PM Magazine.